Tom, you've just been talking with Ten Hag. Yes, I've just been in the press conference post-match. We had to wait quite some time. I think he's speaking to every single journalist in the world, one after the other, uh, celebrating his first trophy, which many of us fear, and I think are probably the same, won't be the last of the Eric Ten Hag era. We're so late here at Wembley Stadium. There's only really me, the gathered media, and the lawnmowers left. Um, terrific performance from Manchester United. They were resounding winners, comfortable winners. They cruised to victory against the previously impressive Newcastle United. And Eric Ten Hag talked a lot about togetherness, the collective spirit, but also he referred a lot to the fact that he's got people like Lissandra Martinez and Anthony, who's won trophies with before. Uh, Casemiro, Rafael Varane have won everything there is to win in the game multiple times over. And he quite rightly put today's victory down to the fact that those are the players he can rely on. If you look at Newcastle, who they played today, only really Kieran Trippier has any experience of winning trophies at the highest level. It showed Eric Ten Hag got the best out of them. And my favourite bit of the press conference, he came in with the Carabao Cup in hand. And then when he left, he had to be reminded by us, the media, that he'd left it on the desk <laughs> as he was walking to the door, which we all enjoyed. I started watching English football in 1974. I think the FA Cup final was Liverpool-Newcastle. And I remember the very first League mm. Cup. It was a guy called Ray Graydon scored for Villa against Norwich. Is it still the same trophy? That little really sort of round, fat squat thing? Yes, yes. It still looks like the, the kind of thing that would be on like your grandmother's yeah, sideboard. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly, yes. Is it important? And if so, why is it important? Well, it's important because in, in terms of second-tier cup competitions, I think England is the most premier. Eric Ten Hag mentioned it in his press conference there that he's very much had it impressed upon him that the League Cup, the EFL Cup, or the Carabao Cup as current sponsor is important to the, the fans of the club and it is important to the soccer fans of this, com this country that um, you do win it. We allow another trophy to be won in this country and trophies to be won and won't in his post-match, the game is about the glory or words to that effect. That's what it's all about. It's a chance for more glory as opposed to other countries who don't take it particularly seriously. Look, we've spoken previously about things that I would change about this competition, change about the FA Cup, change about the football calendar. But today at Wembley Stadium uh, with TalkSports International team, we've been here in front of 90,000 broadcasting the game to 15 countries. Um, and you've got, what, 40,000 plus Geordie fans that have come down from Newcastle hoping for their first trophy um, it, you know it's 50, 60 odd years you've got their first Wembley final since 1999 and you've got a Manchester United team who haven't won a trophy in six years five seasons and a bit and they've spent half a billion pounds on players trying to do so so there is a lot on the line and it adds that little thing on the CV which says yes I am a winner and Eric Ten Hag even if he left Manchester United this summer, which of course he's not going to do, but even if he did, and they don't go on to win the FA Cup, the Europa League or the Premier League, the other trophies they're competing for, Eric Ten Hag, just like Jose Mourinho, will now, whatever happens, leave Manchester United a winner. And that's because of this trophy. So it does matter. It matters to the fans, doesn't it? A day out going to Wembley. I mean, there's all that. It's just such an, 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 an occasion. Is, it, is, is that as important as anything else? That just for the supporters, I mean, it's something different. You actually get to go down to London. You've got a bit of silverware, all of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been involved in ever had following the team here at Wembley in the 2012 playoff and in Wales for the FA Cup final in 2006. One we won, one we lost. But they're the things that you end up remembering. You remember the bar you went to. You remember the, the people you went to the game with. You remember the time that I personally fell down a set of seats that I can see from my vantage point at Wembley when Ricardo Verste scored the winner for West Ham. And I still don't know what the celebration was like because I was too busy being catapulted down the seats um, into the five or six rows in front. So that's what you remember. I hear this as well. Newcastle lost the game today and they will be back at the this level very soon, by the way. They've done this before the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia money really comes into Newcastle. I live in a place called Romford, which is about an hour, hour and a half away from Wembley, quite far east London compared to uh, where we are now. And I went to a local cafe this morning near Gidea Park Station where I live. Um, and the station cafe in Gidea Park, there were four fans of Newcastle United who had come down to London for the day uh, or the day before to go to the game and they heard the Holiday Inn near us was cheap 
And so an hour and a half away in East London, I had breakfast this morning with four fans of Newcastle who had come down for two days in order to come to this final. That's what makes it so special for everyone involved. That's why at the end of the game, you may have seen on your TV pictures, Newcastle fans still waving their flags they got from the, the club and the United fans holding up their scarves. It was a very special occasion, actually. It was a really good final in terms of the two teams involved. Newcastle will come again, I'm sure. And, and I think, you know, patronising as it sounds, I think they will have had a brilliant day down here. And also, they won't feel like it's going to be another, what, 20 plus years till it happens again. I was there in 1999 when United played Newcastle at the FA Cup final. Same score, as a matter of fact. And I just remember Trafalgar Square. I, I mean, every single person from Newcastle was in that fountain. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I, I wasn't in Soho last night in Trafalgar Square in the area, but it was certainly, from the pictures I've seen from colleagues and friends that were in the area, a very similar scenario. I mean, look, for Manchester United, they have been here a little bit more often. There are fans that would have come to today's game who have been to major finals before, like yourself. So it was maybe a slightly less special occasion for them, but there is a sense they are building something. But for the Newcastle fans that have been here today, this is lifelong memories. You know, this is why this cup is important. And this is why it's worth saving and improving and, and finding a way for it to continue to exist and have the certain prestige that it has because you get special moments. You just don't get special moments going to see a game against Nottingham Forest away. You know, it's nice and all that, but it's, it's finals that matter. We want more finals. We want more grand stages and more places for players to prove themselves in front of 90,000. I mean, what a venue this is. For a, for a football match. The way Wembley, from the old Wembley to the new Wembley, from the Twin Towers to the Arch, has continued to have this, this gravitas, certainly in English football, I think in world football as well, um, and, and to win a trophy here, to be here. This is my, I think, eighth or ninth um, League Cup final, and I've been to about 10, 12 FA Cup finals as well as a commentator and a couple as a fan as well. It, it feels like a very, very special occasion. And, you know, Man United fans, even the ones that have seen them win all the trophies, like you, the treble and all that sort of stuff, there'll be fans here today that will remember this as, you know, their first or um, the one they enjoyed the most. And so even I can be grudgingly be happy for some of them today. Not you, but the rest of them. All right, let's talk about the Premier League then. Arsenal winning, Man City winning, Spurs winning. Even your West Ham got a win. Yes, they did. I went to West Ham, Nottingham Forest yesterday. And I've got to tell you, on 75 minutes with a score at nil-nil, if I had any air left, I'd have pulled it out because they just had to win that game. Look, I don't think West Ham will go down, which we've discussed previously. I don't discount it as a possibility, but I do think they will have enough to muster the 40, maybe 44 points uh, that I think they will get come the end of this season. It was a real big building block victory for West Ham, who have had a dismal, dismal season. So, you know, there's a great possibility there for West Ham to have a really good season. They just need to make sure they don't find a way to get themselves relegated. So that was a really, really important victory uh, for West Ham. And, and the other games, um, Arsenal, terrific victory for them, extending their lead at the top. Um, and I also think it's worth noting on Sunday as well, another loss for Chelsea. If they go out to Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League, frankly, there's nothing left to play for for them for the rest of this season. So they can't, can start that new manager search with three months of nothing going on. Is that going to happen? They can't get rid of this guy. They've signed him on a five-year deal. Can't, they can't dump him as well as every other manager that they get. If their season is over in early March, when they or if they lose to Borussia Dortmund, I mean, I just don't think with the best will in the world, there's any signs that he can turn it around. And today, I didn't see the game today, but I looked at the stats of the game and it was all the ball and didn't score a goal, which is pretty much every Graham Potter game I've ever seen. And um, I think that maybe that, that marriage might come to an end sooner rather than later. I don't see it happening... Um, like this season, because the season will, will draw to a close. But look what Eric Ten Hag has done at Manchester United. I think Chelsea might have just hired their Ralph Rangnick. And um, hopefully for them, their Eric Ten Hag might be just around the corner. Tom Rooney, then a couple more quick questions. So Arsenal get a very vital win at Leicester. Man City just an absolute cruise control. This, is, yeah. is, 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 it, is it going to go down to the last two or three games? Can you see that these two teams just keep going toe-to-toe? I think it's a three-team race. Currently, there are three teams in the title race, and one just won the Carabao Cup, and the other two are Arsenal and Manchester City. Arsenal, very impressive when they've had setbacks this season. They've found a way to win again next time out, and I, I do make them slight favourites to win it from this point. But Manchester City, they are more than capable, despite some of the issues we've seen this season, 
He's not going on a, a flat track bully run, winning six to eight in a row and, and making it uh, their title again. So that's really interesting. And you just can't discount Manchester United because we're at the business end of the season. And if I'm a club going into the business end of the season where the trophies are there to be won, I've already won one. And I've got people like Rafael Varane and Casemiro, serial winners in my team then I wouldn't discount anything from happening from that point. So it's a three-team title race. Um, and I do think we will go down to the last three or four weeks of the season. Yeah, I think they'll all stay within four or five points of each other going down to the last couple of games. will be terrific. All right, then the three relegation sides, and these change every week when I ask you. At the moment, it's Southampton, Bournemouth and Everton have slipped back into the bottom three. Yeah, look, I, I still think Southampton will be relegated this season. I've said that to you for a few weeks, mainly because in the end, with the Premier League, in my experience, the quality does make the big difference. And beyond James Ward prowse I don't think there's a great deal of Premier League quality in that squad. So I think they'll go. I think Bournemouth are in a very similar situation. You don't read too much into a thrashing by Man City this weekend. But again, I don't think the quality is there in the, in the final straight. The other position is right up for grabs. As I mentioned, I don't think it will be West Ham. Uh, I think they will find a way to scramble to 15th or, or 16th. I don't think it will be Everton because Everton will never be relegated. If there was a nuclear war, they are very much the cockroach of the Premier League. They will find a way to survive, which leads you to Leeds United. That's who I'd be looking at despite their victory this weekend. I'd also be having a look at Nottingham Forest, who I thought were diabolical against West Ham uh, yesterday. Very poor performance from them. Um, you know, John Joe Shelby, Andre Ayew, 30 players, and I'm not too sure too many of them um, are the kind of players you want in this situation. I'll be looking at them and, and also Crystal Palace and Wolverhampton Wanderers too. So there's a big mix of teams. I think it will become clearer in five to eight games. And I think West Ham and probably Everton will move out of that mix by the time we get to game 30.